having Ella for about a year with us, we are finally ready to share all of our must-haves and also products that we regretted purchasing. Essentially, this video is about products that we think can help you as parents to just make your lives a little bit easier and also save you some time. This is based off of our personal experience, but we hope you guys enjoy this video and we can't wait to share all the details of why we included the things we did on our list. So first, we'll start off with our must-have list. The first thing on my list is the Duna. And if you don't know what a Duna is, it is a car seat and stroller duo. So if you fold it, it becomes a car seat. And if you fold it out, it becomes a stroller. We love this product. And this is one of the things that we regretted not having before Ella came because this is essentially the only car seat and stroller that you would need until your kid outgrows it. And you don't actually need a car seat base. So it's perfect for traveling because you're only taking one item versus three different items that you would normally need to take traveling with you. So it just saves a lot of space and energy. For example, we actually bought this right before we went to New York to visit Kevin's parents but it was perfect for the trip because we were gonna be taking Ubers, whether it's public transportation, taxi, it's perfect because you could fold it up so easily and then you stick it in the car and you click it in with a seatbelt. I would say that the only bad thing about this stroller car seat duo is that there's not really much of a storage. You would need to purchase all these accessories separately, which does get quite expensive, but at least you can kind of pick and choose which accessories you feel like you need to have and you can leave out the ones that you don't need. So overall, I would say this is probably both mine and Kevin's favorite purchase for Ella. This is seriously all you need until your baby outgrows it. The next on our list is the Nestic Crib. This was one of the products that I really, really wanted while I was pregnant when I was researching cribs and things like that. The one that we have is the Wave Crib. We'll link everything down below. But the Wave Crib is a beautifully rounded corners. Um, so I feel like it's already like childproof in that sense but it's very pretty, it's very easy to build, and it's also on wheels. The best function though, I would say, is that it's a three-in-one. So it goes from a bassinet to a full-size crib to a toddler bed eventually. I do think that the price is well justified because it is two things less that you need to buy. You don't need to buy a separate bassinet, you don't have to buy a toddler bed. This is a three-in-one product. And when I look for products, I love it when things have multi-purpose or multi-functional. And this is because I feel like it saves a lot of space and storage in your home and I really don't like clutter and I hate finding space for things because I'm just so bad at organizing that I would rather avoid it. The only bad thing I would say about this product is that Ella seemed to grow out of the bassinet quickly and it's not really because of her size but because she just started moving and fidgeting around much quicker than we thought. But overall I do think that this is probably one of our next favorite purchases. The next on our list is the Ubi diaper pail and I love this diaper pail because it really conceals the smell within the pail. And I think a lot of the times you tend to forget, oh, babies' poops are quite stinky, especially after they start solid. In that sense, I do feel that you just need to be a little bit more conscious of it. Now we don't throw poop in the pail because it just really stinks it up. But I do feel like it's really, really great to have if you need to conceal the smell for the time being. I also chose this pail because it looks very sleek. It fits my aesthetic of the home. And I really do think that it's very functional and it also has a childproof lock. And if you have a child like mine, she just for some reason, like loves to use it as a walker. So she loves to grab herself up on it and just push it around the house. So, I mean, we also make sure that it's very, very clean. I'm wiping it down constantly, but yeah, it's a very sleek design. It's very functional. If she's trying to open the pail, she can't because it's child-proofed. And then Dr. Brown bottles. Um, these were, we didn't try too many bottles out. This was the second one we tried. We initially had the um, Komotomo bottles, but the Dr. Brown bottles are great because it has an internal vent system. For kids that tend to be a little bit more colicky or have gas issues, which was Ella, she had a lot of feeding issues to begin with. And so it was kind of hard to find a bottle that could help her with the gas and the spinning up. Obviously bottles are very much preferences so you do have to try different bottles out with your child and every kid is different. Some kids may not like Dr. Brown bottles but yeah for us it worked really really well. The only bad thing about this product is that there are so many parts to it and there's a lot of crevices that you need to scrub. So the washing was really really annoying especially if you're washing like eight bottles a day. I do think that it can get quite annoying but I 
do think that it works so well for us. The pro kind of just outweighed the con and that's why we ended up continuing to use it. Um, Osprey backpack. If you guys wanna know what this is, this is actually a travel backpack where you put your child in the seat on your back and this is kind of meant more for like hiking, but we kind of use it more on the daily basis. And this is because we never really found a baby carrier that Ella truly liked or that we truly liked. We felt that a lot of them were very not supportive and it hurt our baths. And Ella was a very fidgety child. She did not want to sit in a baby carrier. This backpack is very light. It's very compact. It folds really well. So, I mean, when you're going on a walk or you're going on a hike or you're taking it on vacation, it's truly just such a good addition to all the other things that you're packing but the reason why we initially bought this backpack is because my husband needed a way to walk our dog Essie and also walk Ella but because Essie is a very pulley dog she's very excitable she gets kind of distracted easily it was kind of hard to push the stroller and walk Essie at the same time so we needed a different method and this was our solution. And the only thing with this backpack though is that you can't really use it until your baby can sit up. And fortunately for us, Ella was sitting up at around like three or four months. So we were able to use it soon after she was kind of refusing to sit in a carrier. And to this day, this is probably one of Ella's favorite mode of transportation. She loves that she can just see everything from above. This is one of our favorite purchases, but I also do think that it just fits into our lifestyle very well. Next on our list is a very universal thing. Every video that I've watched about must-haves have this on the list, and it is double zippered footsie pajamas. I just thought that I would love dressing up my child and would want to constantly put them in cute clothing, and I love buttons and cute buttons and things like that. And I did not realize that I would not have time nor would I have the energy to dress my child up every day. So we actually had to buy more of these jammies and you know what, it, it's fine. I mean, she's spitting up more than five times a day and we had to do laundry at least once or twice a day. It just wasn't worth it to put her in cute newborn clothes. So she basically lived in these jammies, especially the ones with the mitts and the footsies. These are great because you don't have to put separate socks or mitts on them and they end up falling off anyway so these were very very good for us more specifically I do think that the double zippered ones are the best because if it's single zipper and you're trying to diaper change them they're naked when they're diaper changing then rather than just pulling up the zipper from the bottom and just exposing the bottom half of their body uh, the, my favorite double zipper jammies are from Gumi Kids, Carter's and Old Navy and then next on our list are Zippity Z sleep sacks. I have a really hard time saying this. It's quite a tongue twister, but we love these sleep sacks because um, it kind of frees Ella up. And like I told you, she is very active. She wants to be free and she's very independent. So these sleep sacks were like magic for us. I mean, we could not figure out what kind of sleep sack she wanted. We needed to keep her warm. So she needed to be swaddled up, but she didn't really like the swaddles we were using initially. And then when we transitioned her into a zippity because we thought she was going to roll soon she just started sleeping through the night like it was really magic we used it during the four month regression so this was our last resort and the moment that we started using the zippity z she just slept through the night she got over the four months regression because of these sleep sacks and the next on our list is a little uncommon but it's pee pads you can just buy these anywhere they sell it everywhere um, but we just get like the large or extra large pee pads these are great for when you first bring your newborn home when you're diaper changing them a lot of the times they will pee on you they will poop on you things will get everywhere I mean, it's just a mess. And I do think that the pee pads are just really nice, easy cleanups um, when you don't have the time when you first bring them home. I, you're just so busy washing bottles, feeding, pumping, changing, doing the laundry. You don't have time to keep wiping and changing the sheets out on your changing pad. And I feel like the pee pads were such a great buy for us. And also Ella did have a very nasty diaper rash. Um, in her first month of being home. And so we did a lot of diaper free time and we would just lay out these pee pads because if she did have an accident, at least the pads are very, very absorbent. Um, and this actually never personally happened to us, but we did hear from other people that they like to use it on their car seat because kids do have blowouts. I think the way that 
car seats are, it just kind of helps, it helps push everything down for kids. A lot of the times I hear stories about kids having blowouts in their car seat. And it's really a hassle to take apart your car seat and wash all the padding. And so just having this on the back of them, even on like trips or road trips, I think is a very, very good idea. Next thing on our must have list is the Infantino activity chair. And obviously this isn't something that you need immediately because they don't start sitting up until much later. But Ella did start sitting up at three or four months like I mentioned before and we needed something to keep her occupied. She didn't really like toys. She wasn't really interested in anything. She just wanted to sit all day long and just see what we were doing. And so we got her this activity chair which she loved. Even like the stuff on there, she really liked playing with it even though she was very, very young. I mean, even to this day, she really loves this chair and it's still here because even if she's standing and cruising around now, she still really loves this chair to this day. She also never really preferred a bouncer or swing. So this was kind of our bouncer or swing. I know that a lot of people do have like the baby Bjorn bouncer on their must have list, but Ella really didn't like being strapped into something. I mean, until recently we feed her on this now, but we didn't really use it in the earlier months. Um, next on our list is the baby monitor. And baby monitor, we actually have two. We have a Nana and the Yuffie. We actually prefer the Yuffie just for convenience. It's easy to carry around a physical monitor rather than having an app running on a device all day long. It drains the battery and it's, I just personally don't really like that. We did do a lot of research on which monitor to buy and we couldn't, we were between Nana and Yuffie, so we decided to buy both. I mean, we used our HSA money as well to purchase these items, so it ended up working out. But we do actually like using the Yuffie more. The only time we use the Nana is when we're not physically home and we're just checking up on Ella. And last but definitely not least on our must-have list is the Newton breathable mattress. And this mattress, let me tell you, is 100% completely breathable. It was the first product that I purchased when I found out that I was pregnant. And it's because I knew that it was going to drive me crazy. I mean, you hear things on social media, you hear things from other people about SIDS, and I just really wanted peace of mind. So this is one of the first products that I purchased. And Ella actually is a tummy sleeper. If we just put her on her back, she rolls to her stomach and sleeps on her stomach. And I do believe that the cost is worth it to save my sanity. It comes with a thick mattress cover. It's kind of like their version of their sheet, but I feel like this is what makes it breathable. If you put a sheet over it, it's actually less breathable. But it's thick enough that liquid doesn't seep through. I mean, sometimes her diaper leaked, and so none of this would actually go through the mattress. All right, and then let's move on to regret. The first thing on my list is my breast friend pillow. Um, this is a breastfeeding pillow that is on many, many people's must have list. This is something that I would wait to purchase until after because I was very set on breastfeeding and pumping. And then when we brought Ella home, we realized that she was having a lot of difficulty latching and we had feeding issues and it ended up not going the way that I planned. I didn't really use this pillow as frequently as I thought. I probably used it only a handful of times and it's just not that cheap of a pillow. It takes up a lot of space because it's bulky. So I wish I would have just waited to purchase it until I had like a definite feeding plan for her after we brought her home. And then when we did actually use the pillow, it just really wasn't comfortable for both Ella and I. I much prefer just to use regular pillows that we had on our bed. The next thing is a Kikaru peanut changer. This is such a sleek design and it looks amazing. It fits my aesthetics in her nursery but it just was not very functional for us. Because Ella was born in the colder months, she just didn't really like having her bare back on this cold changer. I mean, to this day, she just hates anything cold. Her room has to be very, very warm at all times, even in the summer. And we actually don't even use that changer to this day. Initially, when we were using it, we had a blanket on it, which completely defeats the purpose of it. And so for the price tag, I just don't know if it's necessary to have a Kikaru peanut changer. The next thing in our Komotomo bottles. And this is something that we regret just because we had a love-hate relationship with it. I mean, Ella sometimes preferred it, sometimes she didn't. But overall, I mean, other than the fact that it was very, very easy to clean, it just wasn't really great for us because when we try to warm her milk up, the heat doesn't go through the silicone very well. So the milk ended up still being very cold. Ella was very particular about the temperature of our milk. For that purpose alone, I would probably just stay away from these bottles. The next thing on our list are baby carriers. And like I mentioned before, it just 
did not work for us because we had a really hard time finding a carrier that we could use um, longer than two weeks. We did end up purchasing two. The first one is the Solly Baby Wrap, which Ella did like for about two weeks until she got bigger and heavier and more fidgety. But I do think that if we had bought it much earlier and used it earlier on, maybe we would have enjoyed it a little bit more. The second carrier that we had is the original Happy Baby Carrier. And this is nice, I think, for maybe about like a couple weeks, but Ella just didn't really like it. And when we were taking it on walks, when we walk Essie, we walk for a long period of time. It just doesn't have enough structure to support her and also our backs. So we didn't really prefer it. If you guys have any recommendations on baby carriers that you guys love, please leave it down in the comments below and maybe we'll try it next time. Next thing on my list of regrets is the Motif Breast Pump. Um, it was fine for the time that I was using it, but it did break pretty quickly and then it would turn on and then turn off and it just wasn't very consistent. I ended up buying the Spectra anyways, but the reason why I initially got the Motif is because that's what my insurance paid for but because it broke i had to buy the spectra breast pump regardless and it didn't really matter so from the beginning i would just buy a nice breast pump next thing this is pretty universal but buying cute newborn clothes socks and shoes um, just aren't really necessary and i do think that if you want a couple for photos or for going out that's fine but i do think that i over purchased really cute clothing the reason why you don't really need it is because again they are going to live in jammies it's just the most convenient thing for them when they're just home and they're home all day long. There's not really a point in dressing them up. If they're going to spit up on it, they're gonna have an accident on it and things like that. As for socks and shoes, they're constantly falling off. They look cute, but other than that, there's really not a point. A lot of the times, like because they're in footsie jammies, you don't really need socks or shoes. Found that Ella actually outgrew a lot of the shoes before she could actually start wearing them. Uh, the Snuggle Me, which I actually have right here for some reason, Ella likes to play on it sometimes but it's not really necessary because they outgrow it really quickly it's not very big so i would say within the first like two three months they'll probably outgrow it it just wasn't really necessary for us as well because we wanted ella to sleep in her crib even for naps you can't put this in their crib so it ended up not serving much of a purpose for us next on our list is the halo sleep sack and i know that people love this product but honestly i think it just confused us even more because we couldn't tell if Ella wanted her arms in or arms out or if she was too cold or she was too warm. She just seemed to be always fussy whenever we put her in these sleep sacks. So I do think that when we switched over to the, to the zip it easies, that's when we figured out that, oh no, she likes to be free. But I think when her arms are out, she's also cold. So it was just not the best sleep sack for us. I think we would tr probably try a different one next time. And then last on our list is the Dagny Dover diaper bag. And I love Love this product because it looks so nice but I don't think it's very functional and for the price I think you need to have a middle ground so I think for me it's a little bit more manageable but my husband hates this backpack because he hates digging around he says you can't find anything in there and then he ends up having to pull everything out to find what he's looking for so I do think that there's a lot of nice diaper bags out there the one that I want to try next is maybe the Hap Levy I believe that's what it's called but it's really nice because it has a really wide mouth so you open it and you see everything that's in it I would probably look and research for a backpack more like that than a deeper backpack where it's hard to find anything in it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope that you found it helpful. If you guys have any questions, leave it down in the comments below. If you have any recommendations, also leave that in the comments below. And also leave us some suggestions of what kind of baby content you guys want to see more of and we'll see you guys on our next video.